What is going on YouTube? Uh, Andrew Miller, editor over at hook'emheadlines.com. Uh, with me, Tark LaCour, contributor at hook'emheadlines.com. Uh, we are joining you for uh, a bowl season uh, Hook'em Horn show. Uh, we got all the pretty much all the bowl games announced today, college football playoff. Um, the Longhorns were announced to be in the Alamo Bowl as anticipated. Um, they are facing the uh, Washington Huskies, depending on what poll you're looking at, number 12, I believe, in the final playoff rankings, and then number nine in the uh, final AP poll. Um, it's it, This should be a fun Alamo Bowl. I, you, Sark against his former team. Um, BK against his former team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Forget about that. Um, and I, Washington's a really good team. They won six in a row coming into this one. Um, but Texas opens up. I, I saw it a four and a half point favorite on Action Network. Um, I'll continue to pay attention to some of the other sports books. But, um, Torque, what are some of your initial thoughts coming into this? Well, this is what we all thought was going to happen. Texas again being in the Alamo Bowl. They, they've been, I tweeted out, they've been there so many times. I sometimes think the DKR is in San Antonio. But what I think is most poignant in all of this is probably the fact that now that Kansas State has won the Big 12, that Texas has now, since the last time they've won, Oklahoma's won multiple, Baylor's won multiple, and Kansas State has won multiple since Texas has last won a Big 12 championship. And the other thing is that you would be getting to selection Saturday and you're not even really in the big bowl, you're not even in the New York Six or playoff conversation. And that's been the case ever since the playoff has been implemented. So while eight and four was certainly an improvement next year on selection Sunday, Texas needs to be a bigger part of the conversation. Um, Sark shouldn't sleep well knowing that he uh, that TCU is in the playoff before Texas has been that he beat the conference, the now conference champion on the road. And the reason he didn't get there was because against Tech, I don't know, I don't know what was going on there, but against Oklahoma State, just not giving the ball to Bijan Robinson, and of course that was also the problem against TCU. So, hopefully, Tar uh, Sark is very frustrated, and he puts that frustration and anger into these bowl practices. You mentioned in his last, or not in his, maybe it wasn't his last, but it was a recent press conference that he has regrets from the Oklahoma State and TCU games, notably because he didn't rely, it seemed like the tone was that he didn't rely on his best player enough, which was obvious in each game. Oklahoma State, there were other issues as well. Um, but yeah, it's, this is an interesting question that I that I thought of while you were giving some of your thoughts. Um, you know, I, I've thought about the 2023 expectations a little bit, and there's still a long time until then, but um, what, like, do you consider it more important in 2023 for Texas to reach the Big 12 championship game or to be, I know that this can cross over a little bit too, but do you, do you feel it more important for Texas to make the Big 12 championship game or to be in the New Year's Six conversation? Like, which part of that do you feel is more important? I think that to be successful next season, Sark has to win the Big 12. <clears throat> I think so anything. Win the Big 12. Okay. Anything. Uh, no, you should have made the Big 12 this year. You need to win it next year. You're going to be the overwhelming. I mean, think of what Texas has coming back. This is the first time in a while. This almost feels a little bit like 2020, uh, Tom Herman's last year, where Texas had most of its best players all coming back. Uh, you you know, you are losing B. John Robinson, but you're adding the, arguably the best tailback in the country in Cedric Baxter. You already have several other tailbacks on your roster who are good. The, the offensive and defensive line are going to remain intact for the most part. You're returning Jalen Ford, who's your best defensive player. You're returning most of your secondary. You're bringing in a great recruiting class. You have the transfer portal to augment for your Losses there, you get Isaiah Nayer back, likely get Jordan Whittington back, it's looking like. 
there's just not going to be much of an excuse to not win the Big 12 next year. And on top of that, you have three NFL caliber talents at quarterback with Arch Manning, Malik Murphy, and Quinn Ewers. So if that's not enough to win the Big 12, then you're not the right coach. Texas will probably come into the season as the favorite, barring some massive change in the portal. Um, if Max Duggan, who can't, who really can't throw, that's something that I think people should have noticed yesterday in that Kansas State game. Max Duggan is not a very good passer. He's a pretty good athlete. He kind of he does just enough to keep it going, but his receivers have really bailed him out this year, and they didn't as much yesterday. And he still is taking his team to the playoffs. So there's you're just running out of excuses at this point. Now, I'm a big Sark fan. Uh, the first two years, I think I'll give you kind of a pass. Sometimes you just come into the right situation. I think TCU is going to take a big step back next year, just like LSU did, like Baylor did, things like that. But the way Sark is built, he's done everything right. So now we just need year three. We need to see some real winning. With sure. te Texas needs to go into the SEC with the other members of the SEC being like, oh, great. Now we have to deal with these guys. Not like, oh, great. Texas is coming. This is a, an easy win. I mean, the top tier teams. So. It, yeah. I think next year what plays to Texas is benefit. And this is, I mean, we'll end up doing other shows looking forward to next season. Um, so we don't have to spend too long on this, but um there are some of the other teams that, you know, might be a thorn in the side of Texas next year. Like, I don't think TCU is going to be as good. Kansas State, I think that they'll be seven or eight win team at minimum again. They can always be an issue. But like Baylor. Yeah, you get them at home. Yeah. Well, we'll see how the we'll see how the Big 12 ends up redoing the schedule next year. Mm -hmm. um, but Cincinnati loses Luke Fickle. I'm imagining they're going to take a step back. They're supposed to lose a good bit. Um like Oklahoma State just lost their leading tackler for the season for the second straight year. Oklahoma State lost their best defensive, arguably their best defensive player, and it looks like more like Blue Bloods are going to try to throw massive NIL deals at, at them. And the same gonna, is probably going to be said for like maybe not as much Texas Tech, but heard a little bit about West Virginia. Definitely heard a lot about Iowa State. So like the the field of competition in the Big Twelve shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't be as strong as it was this season. So Texas, yeah, Texas should have high expectations for a reason next year. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the significance of the Alamo Bowl this year. How important do you feel it is for Texas to come out of this with a win, if significant at all? I think that... This is important for Quinn Ewers to end the season strong, to, you know, remind people of why he was such a highly regarded talent. Against uh, Washington's offense is really good. Their defense isn't any better than what he's seen over several other defenses this past year. So <clears throat> I think it's important for that. I think it's very important for momentum in uh, recruiting for the 2024 class because there's a lot of great talent in the state of Texas, Micah Hudson, Zaina Yumuzulu. Uh, there's just plenty of great, uh, great talent. I think, sorry, Micah Hudson, not Caleb, sorry. And there's also, you just need to finish the season strong. If you, this is against the top, this would give Sark two, two wins over top 15 teams in the season. So I think that's something else to hang your hat on, saying that you can play against the top end teams and come out with a win. Ultimately, I mean, I don't think the season really changes the, on the bowl game, but the taste in your mouth about how the season finishes will, will change. I don't think winning the bowl game makes this a huge success that it wasn't already. Uh, eight and four it just kind of is what it is. I told my friend before the beginning of the season, I said nine and three, I would feel like yeah, that's a success. Eight and four, I wouldn't say it was failure, but I wouldn't cheer about it either. And that's kind of how I've been feeling. So that's where I am on that. Uh, it's it's really a build towards next year. Again, feel uh, seeing 
who you really have, what you really have, and then obviously using the portal to augment more what you need. It would be really nice for me to see like, I mean, yes, Quinn yours is going to be like the focal point of the game for Texas that you need to see some strides out of. Like that'll be important. Um, because like if it's just Bijan Robinson running all over Washington, if he plays, assuming Bijan plays, right? Um, if it's just how like Bijan, Roshan, Jonathan Brooks, Akil, whoever running all over Washington, I guess if it was Jonathan Brooks, that would be a positive. But um, if it were some one of the guys that's going to be leaving, then it's just not. I mean, it's not as significant. But I pinpoint like Quinn Ewers, as you said. Um, if JT Sanders can have a big game, that would be nice. Um, I mean, offensive line, if, you know, especially if like DJ Campbell is going to be getting the start, it'd be nice for him to end on a high note. Uh, and then defensively, like I, I'm going to do a piece and we can talk a little bit about this, but I'm going to end up doing a piece on the side. I'll link it below once it's up, but about guys who could opt out and Deshaun Jameson, I think is a prime example of a guy that could. So I think if Terrence Brooks has a big game against like a pretty good Washington receiving core, that would be really nice to see. Um, maybe Anthony Cook, if he opts out, seeing, I don't know who, would it be B.J. Allen maybe? I don't know who they'd be starting it. I could see them, point. with the 15 practices, I could see them <clears throat> moving some guys around. If, if Gilbo comes back, you know, you could see him back there maybe. Yeah, it'd be a young secondary at that point for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't think outside of seeing some of the young guys make some strides that it's that it's a huge deal because I think Texas did enough on the field during the regular season to end the 2023 class with a high note. Texas is always going to be an advantageous spot in the portal to get the guys that they want. Um, but overall, like. I think that this, I think that this game is winnable for Texas for sure. But I'm gonna have my eye on the younger guys and the potential opt outs. Seeing what we're hearing about guys that are gonna be leaving early, that'll continue to be a big thing. But like, the portal's still probably gonna be the biggest storyline of the next two months. So, um, anyway, uh, before we get, we'll end up doing a like a group show before the bowl game to give our actual final predictions as we figure out more about opt-outs, injuries, anything like that. Um, what's your maybe some final thoughts, initial prediction? Maybe we can get into that later, but. Um, Texas has shut down most offenses pretty well, so I don't expect that to stop. I think I expect Texas to win. I'm not ready to say a score yet. I need to see what the opt-outs are and things like that first. But I think they should win. Okay. Yeah, th there's a lot of, like... Penix doesn't Penix doesn't exactly strike fear into me. He's too inconsistent. <clears throat> It'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Um, a, a little side note that I thought was interesting. I was, you know, I was covering the opening odds uh, a couple hours ago, and... Um, looking back at it, the one Alamo Bowl that Steve Sarkeesian has played in and the only one that Washington has participated in um, was back in 2011, tech, or, uh, Baylor played Washington, and it was, I believe, 67-56. It was the highest scoring Alamo Bowl ever. <laughs> um, Washington, Like I said, Washington ended up losing that game, but, you know. Didn't play any defense. <laughs> nope. But that was a high scoring. Those are some high scoring Washington teams in the early 2010s for the most part, and let alone those Baylor teams. As, I mean, that was yeah, those would be that would be the those would be the Art Bryles Baylor teams. Yeah, the RG3's team, I do believe. Um, okay. Yeah. So fun Baylor team. But anyway, um, yeah. I mean, I'm. I actually, I think like if Bijan opts out. I don't feel great about Texas's chances against Washington. I think it'll be close, but I would see like maybe a three or four point loss. But we'll see. I mean, I think it's going to end up being a close game either way. Washington's pretty hot headed into this one. So we'll see. I mean, like you said, though, Penix is pretty inconsistent. He's had a good season, but. 
And the defense plays well, especially when they have time to really plan and prepare for opponents. So, yeah. And Jalen Ford, I think, will be on a mission after being robbed of being a defensive player of the year. God, that was that was something. And it, and if DK Zoma ends up having half the production he does last season, doesn't win the Big Twelve Defensive Player of the Year last year, and then God knows. It was probably I, I, I think someone in, in those rooms was like, okay, just anyone else but this guy, and then they picked him. So well, and Bijan let's not get- let's not rue too much on that now. Yeah, that's that's fair. Okay, um, last thing then we can really quickly go through this. I want to do our playoff predictions. Um, so for anyone that's not familiar, the one seed Georgia SEC champion takes on the four seed Ohio State. Um, and then two seed Michigan Big Ten champion takes on Big 12 runner up three seed TCU. Um, what are your what are your picks for it? I think Ohio State will upset Georgia, advance to the national championship game, and I think Michigan will beat TCU, and we'll have the game rematch, and I will pick Ohio State to win that rematch. You're you're picking somewhat of a rerun of 2014 for Ohio State, aren't you? <laughs> I am. I, I, I was watching Michigan last night, and here's the thing. McCarthy had like just his best game against Ohio State. Uh, throwing some great deep balls and things like that. Against Purdue, he did not look great to me. He, just, he, he made a lot of mistakes that like kept Purdue get in the game. And I just kept thinking, yeah, see, if he did this against Ohio State, you wouldn't have won that game. And that's been more consistent with who he's been. And I think that, uh, so I think Ohio State will be uh, much more prepared and they'll uh, be ready to rock and roll. Georgia's problem is I don't I don't think they have enough offensive power firepower to just be trading blows with Ohio State all the time. So that's why I would favor Ohio State. Um, I'm not sure Stetson Bennett will. Uh, I don't like that matchup with him versus C.J. Stroud. I'll take Stroud. And I think that Ohio State has the best group of receivers. I think their running backs will be healthier. So I, I'll take them to. To do it, I mean Georgia can be scored upon, as other people have shown. So, if Ohio State starts out hot, I think that which I think they will. I think they'll. I think on New Year's they'll, New Year's Eve they'll uh, punch their ticket to the national championship game. Ohio State's just if they, I don't know, that offense goes stagnant sometimes. It it's, does, but if they get hot, it's just it's a thing of beauty. It is. It, could you imagine what Texas would be if we just had one r- wide receiver on on the team that was as good as like the third best guy for Ohio State? <laughs> Did you could have just had a neck in Luca or, or something like that or Fleming? Pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, I as much as I would like as much as I would like that. Um, I, I do really like Marvin Harrison Jr., and I think he's better served with C.J. Stroud throwing to him right now than Quinn Ewers. Right, right. No, I'm saying I know Marvin Harrison is the best. I'm like, obviously, everyone would ha- would be greater if they had Marvin Harrison Jr., but I'm saying even the second and third guys are really good. Oh, like, for sure. Fleming's yeah. really good. No, what I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. No, I agree with what you're saying. I was just saying that, like, I like Marvin Harrison, and I think it's better for him. Oh, yeah, I, lo- I, I love watching Marvin Harrison play. He's a, he's yeah. a delight. Uh, but yeah. I, I think... Like in Bu- if you had Mbuka and Worthy, I I would feel way better about the future of the team, because he was he'd be like the perfect complement to Worthy. He's like a stronger number two who can get more of the underneath stuff. Like Jordan Whittington is a three trying to play a two. I think that's been the problem. A big problem this year. Texas didn't have a number two. They just had Worthy, and you know he was frustrated and things like that. So. That's something Whittington. really addressed in the portal. Whittington was like almost like what Jaron, like I, I think the problem with him was almost like what Jaron Thompson was last season, where it was like, hey, I mean, Whittington and Ewers were just never getting on the same page because they were asking Whittington to do too much that just the chemistry wasn't built up yet between him and Ewers. He, sure, he has the versatility to play on the outside, but I think we saw last season that Whittington is best served in the slot, working between the numbers. And that should be his role. Um, anyway, so 
I, I mean, I, yeah, Ohio State and Georgia is definitely the more interesting matchup of the two semifinal games. But I, that, I could see TCU finding a way to beat Michigan. You, just because they, just because it shouldn't happen. But TCU is not going to win the whole thing. That TCU could beat Michigan. They wouldn't beat Ohio State or uh, Georgia. Yeah, TCU. Well, TCU has been flying by the seat of their pants too much this season to to clear through two of these two of these teams in this field. So, I mean, it is interesting to me. I think like Ohio State is. I mean, that long to prepare, that much talent on offense. There's no team to me that's the clear favorite. Um, Georgia's been too. It's been weird. Georgia's had an inconsistent season. So even though they've been still very good. I'm, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of people picking this. But I do think Michigan's going to end up bringing home the title this year. I, I, I think it's one, going to be 1-2 in the national championship game. And there's... There's just something that's sticking out to me about a 27 to 14 win for Michigan over Georgia. I actually think it's probably going to be closer between Michigan and TCU. But that's just what's kind of sticking out to me. Anyway, um, and then maybe we'll see if Jim Harbaugh decides to leave for the NFL. (laughs) But anyway, all right. Um, I think that's pretty much all I had. I mean, do you have any other any other finishing thoughts here today? I still think it's kind of funny that Deion Sanders went to Colorado. <laughs> um, it seemed like he had better opportunities. Yeah. You maybe think? maybe he realizes with USC and UCLA taking off, maybe that won't be as – and, you know, he's Deion Sanders. He figures he can portal his way to getting enough wins to get a better job. I was hearing say, do you think he figures that the Pac-12 South is the kind of the place to be? I mean, I think that's exactly what he thinks. And if he can pull off a win against uh, USC next year, I think he'll vaunt that into a, a, a big job. I mean, he's going he's going to get one. So do you think Travis Hunter ends up in the portal? Absolutely. God, that's going to be interesting. That's fine. I mean, I don't have a look in, in graduate school. People follow their mentors or their advisors to other schools. So I don't have a problem if he only went to that school because of Deion Sanders. He's not going to stay there without him. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way. Jackson Hunter was the number one overall recruit in his class last year. And I haven't seen him play this year because he plays for Jackson State. So we he hasn't gotten that national exposure. So I could see him looking around. Maybe not Colorado. Maybe he decides, you know, now I can go to a bigger stage. He. It'd be cool if Texas could get him. That'd be fun. But he's a oh, man. Yeah, yeah he's a freak. He missed a little bit of the season too, I believe, with injury. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would love to get him. Anyway, all right. Well. We will have plenty of coverage coming up for y'all. Bowl game, portal, um, basketball. That's the most immediate thing. We have uh, Illinois in a couple days. Uh, Tarek, don't know if you'll want to hop on on that, but uh, me and Shane will be doing a pregame show for the Illinois game tomorrow. And that will be the next time we are joining you here, barring any other breaking news that comes up here in the next 24 hours. But anyway, for uh, for Andrew Miller, hookemheadlines.com. Or McCord. That's pretty much it. Welcome. Welcome.